Three past the hour as former President Donald Trump's legal troubles grow, so do his legal bills. And it comes with consequences for his political campaign. Let's bring in former Treasury official and Morning Joe economic analyst Steve Ratner, who is at the wall with charts. And I take it, Steve, Donald Trump doesn't like to pay personally his own bills. He doesn't like to pay personally his own bills, but uh, he's been raising some money, and we'll talk about that in just a second. But let's start by talking about the impact of Donald Trump's indictments on his fundraising, because it's kind of interesting. Mm. So if you look over here, these are Google searches, and you can see that after the Manhattan indictment, his searches on Google shot way, way up here. to It's an index number of 100, pretty much as high as it can go. Then you can see a little bit of a bump during the Gene Carroll thing. Then the documents indictment, much less of a bump in his Google searches. And then January 6th, also much less of a bump. But interestingly, his fundraising has tracked this to a considerable degree. He raised almost $4 million in one day after the Manhattan indictments and a total of $14 million over this period. But it did trail off. He only raised $6 million after the documents indictment. And we don't know yet about the other two but at least the initial rush of donors to him over that uh, faded. But when you look at the impact on his total fundraising, he's raised $54 million uh, during this period, the first half of this year. But $20 million of it came in the wake of those two sets of indictments. So the indictments have been a big part on the revenue side, if you will, of his finances, of his, uh, of his campaign. And certainly, Steve, a flurry of emails soliciting donations. This have come out this week from the campaign after uh, the Georgia indictment. But that's the money he's raised, but he's also had to spend quite a bit. And your second chart there on the southwest wall is about the legal fees and how they're draining the campaign's coffers. Yeah, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, he has actually been paying not only his legal fees, but for a bunch of his team out of his campaign finances. And it would probably be interesting for a donor to Trump to know that 50 cents of every dollar he raised in the first half of this year went to pay legal fees. So if you give money to Donald Trump, half of it roughly, at least for the last six months, has been his legal defense fund, and the other half actually his campaign, so you should know what you're giving to. But you can see that over time, his legal bills have been mounting quarter by quarter, 6 to 8 to 12 to 15 million. His, fin his f uh, fundraising did drop a bit. It was higher in the second quarter of this year. We'll see how that all falls out. But then it's had a pretty big impact on his cash on hand. He went for $114 million of cash at the beginning of last year, most of this in one of his packs, all the way down to $63 million at the moment. But, some, but this pack of his, his main pack, has literally gone down to five million dollars of cash. So his cash, his cash coffers have come down a good bit as he's paid his legal bills and also, of course, some money for his campaign. So <clears throat> these donors must really be uh, supportive of Donald Trump being so willing to pay his legal bills. Claire McCaskill, you have the next question. Yeah, Steve, did you have a chance to look at uh, the two categories of fundraising? I like to call it one category is checks with commas in them. And the other category mm -hmm. is t 20 bucks online. Uh, how, how big has the exodus been from Trump, from people who write big checks? And how dependent is he on the low donors, the $5, the $10, the people who give yeah. him constantly small amounts? Unfortunately, Claire, I don't have those numbers yet, but I have some other numbers that uh, are also interesting relative to historic fundraising. So if you go back to his 2019 campaign, Trump raised in just the second quarter that he, that when he announced in 2019 over $100 million, combination of small donors, big donors, and various committees. This time around, he's raised just a bit over $40 million, even if you include the RNC in his money. So his fundraising, at least so far in this cycle, is a good bit less than it was last time. Now, that said, of course, his fundraising relative to the other Republicans is still uh, much stronger. $35 million raised in the second quarter versus 20 for DeSantis and much less for Haley Scott and so forth. And so the interesting question that we're going to face is what uh, the impact of these latest set of indictments are going to be on his fundraising. As we all know, his polling numbers have stayed quite strong. This is, these are polling averages. He did get that bump after the New York indictment. But since then, he's actually flatlined, even as DeSantis has lost 10 percentage points of his popularity, which has gone to some of the bottom tier candidates. 
So it'll be an interesting question to see, and your interesting uh, polls from a few minutes ago, it'll be interesting to see whether uh, his popularity or his lack of popularity affects his fundraising as he goes forward. But clearly, his fundraising and his campaign finances are not going as well as they did last time, and in part because he's spending so much of his donors' money that they probably think is going to his campaign on his legal bills. Yeah, I was being sarcastic when I said his donors are so generous that they'd pay his legal bills. Steve Ratner, thank you very much. And coming up in another...